graphs used to represent organized data. After organizing data in a frequency distribution, we need to present the data in a more comprehensive manner. Here are some of the most used types of graphs to represent organized data. 1. Pie chart. Pie chart is also called a circle graph. It is a circle divided into sections used to show how the relation of a part with a whole. At the right is a pie chart showing the enrollment of Bululawan National High School for the school year 2020-2023 from grade 7 to grade 10. In this graph, we can see the title, we can see the legend, so these are the legend. So the color serves us the grade, and then we also have the percentages. If we don't want the legend to appear here, we can also reflect the grade level inside the sector with its corresponding percentage. How are we going to make this graph? How do we know that grade 8 is 22.55%? I use Microsoft Excel to make this graph, so it is very easy. It will reflect directly, but how are we going to make a pie chart manually? Here are some steps to manually make a pie chart. From the pie chart on the last page, so we can have this table. The first column here reflects the grades. So we have grade 10 until grade 7. We also reflect here the total. And then frequencies. So we have the frequencies and the total number of enrollees is 204. And then for the third column, so we have the percentage. This is now... How are we going to solve for the percentage that we reflect in each section? So we have here 47. So we get 47 from here and divided by the total. So the total is 204. And then we have to multiply its quotient to 100. And then we get 23.04%. We only have to follow that steps until... We get all the percentages, and each total is equal to 100. In the fourth column, we need to know what is the size of each percentage. We need to compute the degree of each sector. So we also have to follow the formula. We have here the number of enrollment divided by total enrollment times 360. So that is 47 divided by 200 times 360. So the 360 is based on the whole degree measure of a circle so we get here 83 degrees so follow the same process until you finish all the grade level and be sure that will come up with a total of 360 now that we have this we can manually make the circle and divide a circle with the correct degrees using a protractor next is a bar graph it is used for making direct visual comparisons of data if our goal is to compare data then we need a bar graph this graph is advised to use for categorical data. Like in this example, so we have Jake Sarisari stores daily income. The days of the week that is reflected in the y-axis is an example of categorical data, opposite to the quantitative data that can be counted. In the x-axis reflects the income. This bar graph is formatted horizontally. We can opt to make it vertical. So in that case, the days of the week reflects in the x-axis and the income reflects in the y-axis. Next is the line graph. It is used in presenting data that indicate trends over a period. The trend may be falling or rising. Example, the profit of the computer shop for five years. So we have here indicated in thousands. That means the numbers from one to seven that reflected in the y-axis means 1,000 to 1,000. 3,000, and so on. So since we cover only five years, we start from 2018 until 2022. So now we examine the trend of the profit. So for 2018, its profit is 2,000, and it rises up in 2019. It falls down in 2020 to 3,200, and it rises again in 2021 by 4,000 until it reaches to 6,000 in the year 2022. So the trend here is still rising. Next is histogram. Histogram is a type of bar graph of the frequencies of the set of data. 
So we have here in the example, the scores of grade seven in mathematics here reflected in the X axis are numbers because histogram is advised to use for numerical data or quantitative data. So we have here the scores. These are numerical, numerical, which means in a form of numbers and it can be counted. So the number of students are reflected in the y-axis here. If we can see, 6 has the highest of frequency, which means most of the students got 6. And the lowest frequency is 1, which means least of the students got 1. Next is the OGIV. It is used to show cumulative frequency for frequency distribution. We have already discussed making frequency distribution. And yes, it is look like here. So we have the marks or the class intervals here and the frequency. So for the OGIV, because we need to have the cumulative frequency, we add a cumulative frequency column. So in the cumulative frequency column, we have here four in the frequency. So we only have to copy that one reflected in the cumulative frequency, add the second frequency. And then you also have the second cumulative frequency, you have to add the third frequency, then you also get the third cumulative frequency. So you do that until you finish up to the last frequency. So it looks like a zigzag. It looks like this. You have, okay, that's it. Okay, next, get the upper limits for class limits. And then get also the cumulative frequency. Plot these points in a Cartesian plane. So we have here our Cartesian plane. This is the y-axis and the x-axis. This is the same as with the other graphs that we use x and y-axis. So here we calibrate our Cartesian plane by 10 so we can show the large numbers. Our first point is 4 and 4, so it's located here. And 8 and 10 is also located here. 12 and 20 here 16 and 28 and 20 32 so it looks like a line graph points are connected by a line it's time for an activity number one the table shows the age of grade 7 students our task here is to construct a histogram out of this given data reflected in our histogram are the number of students in the y-axis and the age of students in the x-axis. Remember that histogram are made of bars, the same as bar graph, but it has no space in between the bars. As we can see, the bars are continuous. So as we compare the data, most of the students aged 13, and there are only two students who age 16. Number two, the table shows the total income of calendaria from January to May. Our task here is to construct a line graph. So we need to see the trend of the income of the current area for five months. Here is now our line graph showing the income of current area from January to May. In January, our income is 1,000 and it rises up to February. So our income in February, so we have here the table, it's 1,300. For the month of March, it rises up to 2500 and for the month of april it lowers down to 2300 and for the month of may it rises up to 3000 as we look at the trend of this income so it is rising number three the table shows the number of roots sale so we need to construct a bar graph out of this so this is now the bar graph showing the sales of fruits. As we can see here, the fruits that sales the most is apple. Mango sales the least. Number four, the table shows the scores of grade seven in mathematics test. So we need to construct an OGIV. Remember that to construct an OGIV, we need to have a cumulative frequency and the upper limits. So we have here below the upper class limits and the cumulative frequencies and we write their points so we can easily plot it. So uh, this is how our OGIV looks like. So we plot the points here. Number five, the table shows 100 different colors of balloons Anna wants for her birthday. So out of this data, we need to construct a pie graph. 
Remember that in making a pie graph, we need to have this data. So we have the colors, the frequencies. So as we look at the frequencies, the total is 100. It is not difficult to convert it to percentage because the percentage is equal to its number. As we can see here in our percentage column, so we follow the formula. 20 divided by 100 so the 100 here comes from the total and multiply it by 100 which is equal to 20 so that's what i've told you just a while ago that the percentage is equal to the number itself so we need to follow the formula until all the numbers are converted to percentage and make sure that the total of that is 100%. Next is the degree of a circle. So we have here, again, the formula. We need to get the frequency divided by 100 times 360. So that is equal to 72. So follow the formula until all of the colors are given exact degree measures. So be sure. The total is 360 degrees. So now our pie graph looks like this. So we have here the different color Anna wants for her birthday. So as we can see that green, our green is 25. So that is also equal to 25%. So 25% has a 90 degree measure of the sector. So of course, because 25% is one fourth of the circle. So as we can see here, it's one fourth of the circle. Everything follows based on our table. So that's all for our graphs that represents organized data. If you find this video helpful, then please give me a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to keep updated for my new uploads. Thanks for watching!